Now, um, now someone was to come up to you and say, okay, so what you're saying makes sense, but what is like the proof of God and like what is the proof of Islam itself? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's an important question, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, proof of God and proof of, of Islam. Um, you know, one time I received a call from a non-Muslim sister uh, on the same telephone line which I mentioned, right? 1-800-662-ISLAM. Yeah. Yeah. So she said, uh, you know, I'm an atheist. So she was saying that she's an atheist and she would yeah. like to meet with me. So I live in Chicago. She was also from Chicago. So I said, okay, fine. Let's meet in the public library. So whenever I have to meet a non, whenever I have to meet a lady, I always take my wife with me because that's more appropriate, right? So we went yeah. to the public library, Skokie Public Library, right? Oh, and okay. I met with her in one of the rooms, my wife, myself, and her. And in the very first session, she asked me the question, okay, Dr. Sabil, please tell me that I'm an atheist. What is the evidence that there is a creator? I mentioned to her that there is ample evidence uh, from every single branch of science. May that be biology, biochemistry, physics, mathematics, you know, cosmology, any science, any branch of science that you look at, every single branch of science, it points towards a higher power. So then I gave her many evidence, right? But one which I will give right now is this. Anyone who may have taken at least like one semester of biology, right? Basit, you have taken biology? Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, maybe a long time ago. Okay. So, so a, a human body has many, many cells, like 100 trillion plus cells. So if you take one cell, like, for example, from the fingertip and put it into a high-powered microscope, you will see many structures in the cell, many different organelles, as we say, right? Many different parts yeah. of the cell. One of the parts would be the nucleus. And the nucleus is like the brain of the cell because in inside there, you have the code, okay, just like you have a computer code. Yeah. There is a coding in the cell nucleus that runs the whole cell. That is a program in the nucleus, which is called as the, the genetic structure, the 23 pairs of chromosomes. Oh, yeah. So they are the ones, that is the code in there that uh, informs the rest of the cell when, when the cell should divide, when to make the proteins, what proteins to make right? Uh, the ribosomes, the Golgi apparatus, and uh, the energy system of the cell, the lysosomes, which is the disposable system of the cell, the highways of the cell. So that coding system in the nucleus, it commands the rest of the cell. And the cells coming together, they form organs, and organs coming together, they form the human body. Okay? Yeah. So far with me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, fine. It's, it's so, your biology, yeah. yeah, looks like a biology 101 class here, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if you take uh, if you take that uh, that biological code, yeah. the biological code within one cell, if you open it and if you want to write that code down in the in the book, you need 900 books and 500 pages thick age book. That is the amount of information within one single cell's nucleus. Wow. You know, so I'm sitting in front of, uh, yeah, mind boggling, right? So I'm sitting yeah. in front of a computer, the computer, right? It has a programming, uh, there's a programmer, and it's a programming, there's a coding, which is done to run this meeting. So that uh, code, that information from the cell, it needs like, you know, 900 books, like all filled up in my whole room. And the yeah. size of like Harry Potter size books, that much information yeah. is there in one cell. So the question is this. Nature could not produce that much information from scratch. If you see a book in a public library, right away you know that you know, uh, it has to be someone who wrote. There's an author to it. You know, in the white wall next to me here, if I throw ink on the white wall randomly, it is not going to create like a whole, uh, you know, words with sentences, with the meaning and with the whole page and with the whole books, it will never do that. So how can we say that nature created 900 books, 500 pages thick age book? It's impossible. If nature did not do it, if humans did not do it, the only other uh, option that we have is someone who is beyond nature. 
and that we say is the creator of the nature. In Arabic, he is Allah. So the field of biology points towards a higher power. In the same way, biochemistry, cosmology, physics, every single branch of science. So in that meeting with that atheist lady, in that library, Skokie library, I mentioned this yeah. point to her, right? Or these points to her. She said, wow, I do agree that there is a higher power. So in that first 90 minute session, okay, fine. She had enough to chew on, right? To process. Yeah. So we uh, ended the meeting and she came back the next week. Then she asked this question. Okay, fine. I agree that there is a creator, but there are so many faiths which are out there. How do you know that Islam is the right faith? Yeah. Isn't that a good question, Basit? Yeah, no, that's right. right. Yeah. So I mentioned to her, I will give you four quick points. The very first point which I mentioned to her was, okay, fine. Let's take all the faiths out there. Which concept of God appeals to you? Does it appeal to you that we should bow down and we should uh, worship an idol that we made with our own hands? And do we now call that idol as the Lord of the universe, right? Come on, it's made, it is made by humans. How can that idol be the creator of humanity or the whole universe? Or does it make sense to you that God is three in one, one in three, and Jesus is God, Jesus he used to eat, he used to go to washroom. He, uh, he was dependent on oxygen, dependent on gravity. How can we take that person to be the Lord of the universe? Or does it make sense to you that we take the creator of the universe who is uh, eternal, independent, powerful, all-knowing, loving, guiding creator? So if I give you these three options, uh, sister, which one would you choose? She chose the concept of God that Islam believed in, right? Then the second point which I mentioned to her is that, okay, fine, there are so many books, so many scriptures out there in every single faith. They say that their scripture is the word of God. How do we know? So I mentioned to her, okay, do you agree that uh, one criteria to judge that which scripture is the word of God is that the scripture has to be pure without any change, alteration, without any revisions and versions to it. Do you agree with that? She said, yes. Then I showed her that Quran is the only scripture that has been preserved from the time it was revealed up until our time and it will continue. So there's a prophecy in the Quran. It is Allah who has revealed this zikr, this message. He will preserve it. So Basit, I mentioned to her, there are 15 million plus Muslims who memorize the whole Quran. All right. Yeah. Uh, many in Chicago. Have you, by the way? Have I what? Are you one of the memorizers? Oh, no, unfortunately, I haven't memorized the whole Quran. I memorized like parts of it. Yeah. Parts of it, right? I mean, I memorized a chunk of it too, but there are so many memorizers. Yeah. They are zero for the Bible, and Bible has been changed, both the Old and the New Testament. It has many versions to it. There is not one version of the Bible which Christians can say, this is the one that was revealed and coming down to us. Same thing with the Hindu Veda, same thing with any other scripture. Quran is the only scripture that fulfills the criteria of being unchanged. She said, yeah. okay, fine. She agrees with that. Then I went over the third point, which is third of the four points, right? I mentioned yeah. to her, if God is the God of the whole creation and of humanity, humanity, we need uh, guidance. How to run an efficient political, economic, social, judiciary, penal, educational, all the systems, we need guidance. Other scriptures, they don't give that guidance, only the Quran does. We need guidance, other scriptures don't have it, the Quran does. And that's also an indication, Quran is the word of Allah. Yeah. And the last important uh, point which I mentioned to her was that uh, I want to know, you want to know what happens once we die. The Christians, they say that if we believe in somebody dying for us, that's how we go to paradise. But come on, that's not uh, rational, that's not logical. Why would somebody die? Why would somebody has to be killed for my sins? If I drive over the spe speed limit, Basit, you should not get my ticket. I should get my ticket, right? Yeah. So Islam is logical. Islam says in personal accountability. Hindus say that you come back cycle after cycle, right? As a human, as a cockroach, as a dog, as a monkey, as a amoeba. Come on, you know, how would they know? How would a dog know how to be a good dog to come back as a as a human the next time, right? Would they go to public libraries? Would prophets be sent to their dog? Come on. 
So Islam is the only faith that makes sense, personal accountability. You have yeah. the right belief, you do good deeds, God's mercy comes into play, that's how you go to paradise. So when I gave her all of these options about Islam compared to different faiths, she said yes. She agrees that Islam makes the most sense. So her initial question was, how do you know God exists? She agrees that there is a creator. Of all the faiths, her question was, how do you know Islam is the right faith? I gave her these four points. Concept of God, purity of the scriptures, comprehensive guidance in Islam, and the concept of the hereafter. She said she agrees with that. Basit, shedding tears in that public library, this atheist lady, she recited, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. She converted to Islam, not because of me, Allah guided her. Yeah. So that is the formula that I use uh, to uh, share Islam and to educate our fellow atheists to the truth of Islam. Mashallah, that sounds really good, honestly, story. Uh, it fits that question that I asked very well. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Right? Sorry, I gave a longer answer because I want yeah. to benefit the viewers uh, that, you know, this is the approach and uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, we try our best. And then uh, yeah. we pray to Allah for acceptance of uh, our work and the guidance for the non-Muslims. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was really good, honestly.